So for those of you who have not yet seen it, Trudeau's plan to freeze handguns spurred six months of incredible sales. And now that the handgun sales are illegal, 30% of their business is gone. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Woo! So, uh, so this story started back in about April. And uh, that's when Trudeau said that, guess what? I'm going to make it so that you can't buy, sell, or transfer a handgun. Now, we'll give, we'll give them credit for being pretty smart about this because it means that if you have your handgun already, they're not going to come and take it from you. But they've made it so no one else can get one and you can't do anything with yours. So, for example, you know, I got three daughters. I bought handguns for each of them to give to them as they each got older and did their uh, courses and stuff like that. I can't give them their handguns now because I'm not allowed to transfer them. So he, uh, it's pretty smart way of doing the first step to grabbing them, right? So he came up with this idea in April and said it to everybody because obviously uh, keeping um, a lid on legal handgun owners isn't going to do anything for handgun crime, obviously. No. But it's all about the politics for his base, right? If he can have a wedge issue and say, look what I'm doing on this, it keeps his base voting for him. So he had to make that announcement. But what that announcement did, even though they knew that Parliament wasn't going to be meeting again until the fall to actually uh, ratify any of this, he made the announcement and all of a sudden everybody was buying a handgun as fast as they could because there was like, oh, my God, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it. And that's what that article was a little bit about. So what they did was, as they saw this happening, they uh, the federal government has control over imports. Right. You know, they can decide what's coming in another country. So those bastards, what they did was is they made importing handguns illegal uh, about a month ago. And so now that cut off the flow because, of course, most handguns uh, coming into Canada, either illegally or legally, come from the states, right? So the uh, the import ban on handguns was actually only from the states. You could have imported from, from somewhere else, but hardly any other handguns come from anywhere else. So then the finally, finally, uh, what put the nail in the coffin here was just on October 21st, they had uh, what's called an order in council. An order in council is... Uh, equivalent to like an executive order down there. So it's not anything voted on by uh, by the, the House of Commons, which is the equivalent of the Congress. This is no vote, no nothing. All of a sudden, boom, your handguns are frozen. So I don't know where we're going from here. I know that they'll they'll meet in Parliament eventually and they'll vote on this bill. They'll probably pass it for reasons that I'll go into uh, later, if you like. Okay. But uh, but yeah, we're uh, we're this is the first step to uh, to weapons confiscation. Now, interestingly enough, just as a sidebar, um, last year they passed legislation where they banned assault rifles, right? <laughs> and assault rifles are basically defined as anything that looks scary because there was no they there was exist, no rhyme or reason really. to it, right? Now, what's interesting is is they are supposed to be that's supposed to be happening now. There was a buyback program that was offered for it, but now you're supposed to not have them. Well. My province, Alberta, uh, the next one over Saskatchewan, the next one over Manitoba, and the territory of Yukon have all said, we are not going to use the RCMP, which is the federal police force, to confiscate these weapons. We think this is a bad idea, so we're not going to use it. So there's actually a bit of a showdown going on. So it would be like the equivalent between state and federal, provincial and uh, federal showdown here about whether this is actually going to get implemented or not. So stand by for more yeah yeah it's crazy <clears throat> wow. i was just looking through the article that you sent in and this passage here really stuck out to me uh canadian firearms retailers were blindsided by last week's announcement on the freeze retailers say they were told they would be able to sell handguns until bill c21 passed mm -hmm. we were told that we would have until the legislation passes or if there was any emergency measure we'd be given lots of notice it turns out we were not given notice we were told on friday morning that oh by the way we just immediately instituted a ban by order of Council and that's retroactive to last night at midnight. Nice. That's some yeah. weapons grade horse shit right there. <laughs> yeah, that that, yeah. Is, oh, for that sure. is some well, messed up it, shit it's, right there. It's abuse of power, right? I mean, yes. it, oh no. It's, it's, no. 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 No, we haven't seen gross abuse of power no. in the past three years, have we? No, Trudeau totally didn't freeze the bank accounts of truckers who yeah. were just trying to air a legitimate <laughs> oh. grievance with this disgusting oh. authoritarian bullshit. That's absolutely yeah. Don't that. even start me on that because they're having the inquest right now oh. as to uh whether it was justified or not to invoke the emergencies act and 
we'll, we'll, we'll leave that for another because I I'll well just, we know I'll it just... wasn't <laughs> yeah well <laughs> we well what's what's okay well well 30 seconds worth yeah we know it wasn't the evidence is coming out that it wasn't the big yep. problem is though is that there's no accountability of course so not. because because of the Canadian parliamentary system you've actually got the Liberals have a minority government, so they're being supported by that far left government. And the guy who's in or, uh, party, so that far left guy, his name is Jagmeet Singh. I'm not even kind of kidding. Jagmeet He's, Singh. <laughs> yes. He has stated categorically that even, <laughs> I know, right? Even if, even if the uh, inquest comes up and says it was totally not justified, totally illegal move, he says, I'll still support the government. I don't care. Wow. Well, there you go. I'm shocked. Shocker. Well, not yeah. really. But... Shocker and a spocker. Yeah, yeah. The rocker, the showstopper, and my personal favorite, the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <sighs> this is why I've been calling it Canada or Kanukistan, if you prefer. Yeah. Because th this is this is horrendous. Uh, uh, no one's going to convince me that Trudeau was uh, fairly reinstituted. <clears throat> I well, think. Uh, you, 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 well, here, here's the thing. Well, first of all, point number one, uh, it's creating fractures up here the same way you're seeing fractures down there. So, for example, we have a premier now, it's equivalent of a governor uh, of Alberta, who's <laughs> openly saying, yeah, we need to have Alberta separate from the rest of the country. Like there's 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 motions going towards that. Uh, the first being the Sovereignty Act, where it's basically saying, look, if the federal government does anything we don't like. We're not going to follow it. There's more to it than that. Okay. There you go. I, have a, I have a thought. The province beside us, Saskatchewan, has already passed one saying, "Yeah, we aren't. We are. We're any legislation that comes from the federal government that is against our interest, we're not following either." So, I mean, Good. stuff's coming apart. Like, it's not. It's not <clears throat> cool, man. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you have tyranny taking place. Yeah. People like, are, are, like rational people, realize. There are certain ways things get done. The governments from back in the day put a process in place for things to get done. But corruption has allowed that to be hijacked. And we're, we are seeing this happen in real time with what our governments are doing. Yeah. Well, you, you know, to, to your point, <clears throat> you, you, were, you were mentioning, Blake, you said, well, uh, you, that maybe Trudeau didn't get in there fairly. Actually, I, I think he did. I think that he did win that vote. And the reason why I say that is because you've got so many people convinced down east. And so the eastern uh, voters, they're very much like your city voters, like New York uh, and then L.A. kind of thing. Same no, idea, no, Toronto? Liberal, liberal type vote. Exactly. There's yeah. no way Toronto is like New York or L.A. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't get me started. <laughs> Shut your but lying the, mouth. But the fact is, is that, you know, from all the censorship and the media blitzing and all that stuff, they got these people so convinced and so scared of everything that they keep voting for these ass clowns and there's no what do you do hell, hell of a lot apparently i don't know man i don't know I, I just don't get it i don't understand how you can see the direction that these countries are going in and think okay yeah what we need is more government because they're clearly not the problem they're different they <clears throat> love me well, yeah. well what, what could go wrong for, for sure, for sure, we can definitely stop gun violence by taking guns away from the legal gun owners who go Absolutely. through this Listen, entire yeah. process of trying to have your firearm. Did yeah, we have all of this gun violence prior to 1968? No, we did not. Nope. And you know why? We had the nuclear family. Yep. And that has been eroded. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you have the feminists come in and they... Yeah. I want all this emotional, touchy-feely shit. Yep. And everyone got soft. And now we're in the depopulation stage yeah. of their little event. So we're going to sterilize all the kids, <laughs> convince them that, you know, being a transformer is the best way forward. Abortion up to including 28 days after birth. What could go wrong? Yeah, I know. I know. Like, our, we have to have a private prison industry here in the United States just to manage the fucking carnage from the single mothers. Yep. They are literally felony factories that drop out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Woo! Well, you you know got to write that one down. You know that shirt? <laughs> you know that shirt that's the silhouette of the stripper on the pole and it says, I support single mothers? 
You, we should make one that says we all support felony factories. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what's with happening. our taxes. Eight, I mean, eighty-five percent of the people that wind up incarcerated, no father at no home, no father at home, and they try to. Well, you know, they had mentors. It's not the same thing. No, not the same thing at all. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> And then, funny enough, I mean, we see this going on up in Kanukistan, and then you go to Kukafornistan, and apparently it's worse. Yeah. Let that sink in. Uh, we actually got a couple of chats here that are germane to what we're talking about here. Larry Bentley said, we tried and failed to invade Canada during the War of 1812, the only time we failed. Canadians are pretty polite until you utter the word war. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> First of all, we, we, we're not going to fight in the wintertime because, A, it's cold, and B, we got to play hockey. So well, I, mean, oh, yeah, there, yeah. There, there's that. Right? I have a feeling that if that were to happen today, it would be a completely different thing. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, in, in Canada now, like that's you know one of the only populations that where like most <clears throat> of the people enter the fight already missing teeth. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> I mean, during 1812, when we sent expeditions to invade Canada, yeah. there are a bunch of people, the hodgepodge of people thrown together. They had, like, no supplies, limited equipment. Now, maps were fucked up. They had Indian guides. Some of them didn't even like them. Yeah. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8pm Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Caser box.